Welcome to our continuing series, Fine Poetry, the poem of Lassilis Abercrombie. Emblems of Love She Only to be twin elements of joy in this extravagance of being, love, were our divided natures shaped in twain, and to this hour the whole world must consent. Is it not very marvelous our lives can only come to this out of a long, strange sundering with the years of the world between us? He, shall life do more than God? For hath not God striven with himself, when into known delight his unaccomplished joy he would put forth, this mystery of a world sign of his striving? Else wherefore this, a thing to break the mind with laboring in the wonder of it, that here being the world and we is suffered to be, but lying on thy breast one notable day, sudden exceeding agony of love made my mind a trance of infinite knowledge. I was not, yet I saw the will of God as light unfashioned, unendurable flame interminable, not to be supposed, and there was no more creature except light, the dreadful burning of the lonely God's unuttered joy. And then, past telling, came shuddering and division in the light. Therein, like trembling, was desire to know its own perfect beauty, and it became a cloven fire a double flaming, each adorable to each, against itself, waging a burning love, which was the world. A moment satisfied in that love strife, I knew the world. And when I fell from there, then knew I also what this life would do in being twin, in being man and woman for it would do even as its endless master, making the world had done, yea, with itself would strive, and for the strife would into sex be cloven, double burning, made thereby desirable to itself. Contrived joy is sex in life, and by no other thing than by a perfect sundering could life change the dark stream of unappointed joy to perfect praise of itself, the glee that loves and worships its own being. This is ours, yet only for that we have been so long sundered desire. Thence is our life all praise. But we well knowing by our strength of joy, there is no sundering more, how far we love from those sad lives that know a half-love only. Alone, thereby knowing themselves forever sealed in division of love, and therefore made to pour their strength always into their love's fierceness, as green wood bleeds its hissing sap into red heat of a fire. Not so do we. The cloven anger, life, hath left to wage its flame against itself. Here turned to one self-adoration. Ah, what comes of this? The joy falters a moment with closed wings, wearying in its upward journey, ere again it goes on high, bearing its song, its delight breathing and its vigor beating, the highest height of the air 
above the world. She, what hast thou done to me? I would have soul before I knew thee, love, a captive held by flesh. Now, inly delighted with desire, my body knows itself to be naught else but thy heart's worship of me, and my soul therein is sunlight held by warm gold air. Nay, all my body is become a song upon the breath of spirit, a love song. He and mine is all like one rapt faculty, as it were listening to the love in thee, my whole mortality trembling to take thy body like heard singing of thy spirit. She, surely by this, beloved, we must know our love is perfect here that not as holds the common dullard thought, we are things lost in an amazement that is all unaware. But wonderfully knowing what we are, lo, now that body is the song whereof spirit is mood, knoweth not our delight, knoweth not beautifully now our love, that life, here to this festival bid come, clad in his splendor of worldly day and night, filled and empowered by heavenly lust, is all the glad imagination of the spirit. He, were it not so, love could not be at all, naught could be, but a yearning to fulfill desire of beauty, by vain reaching forth of sense, to hold and understand the vision made by impassioned body, vision of thee. But music mixed with music are, in love, bodily senses. And as flame hath light, spirit this nature hath imagined round it, no way concealed therein when love comes near nor in the perfect wedding of desires suffering any hindrance. She, ah, but now, now I am given love's eternal secret. Yea, thou and I who speak are but the joy of our forever mated spirits. But now the wisdom of my gladness, even through spirit, looks divinely elate. Who hath for joy our spirits? Who hath imagined them round him in fashioned radiance of desire, as into light of these exulting bodies flaming spirit is uttered? He, yea, hear the end of love's astonishment. Now know we spirit. And who for ease of joy, contriveth spirit. Now all life's loveliness and power we have dissolved in this one moment, and our burning carries all shining upward, till in us life is not life, but the desire of God, himself desiring and himself accepting. Now what was prophecy in us is made fulfillment. We are the hour and we are the joy. We, in our marvelousness of single knowledge, of spirit breaking down the room of fate and drawing into his light the greeting fire of God. God, known in ecstasy of love, wedding himself to utterance of himself. <laughs>